Hello YouTube friends, this is Recovering Yankee, and thank you for looking at my channel. I've decided to do a video on turning your Roman calendar into a Torah-based calendar. This is going to be a how-to video. And also, as a result of uh, some people giving me guidance and advice on how to make better videos, I'm going to be doing... I wrote down on note cards what I want to say and then I'm going to read from the note cards. While I'm giving you this information, up until the time I start showing the calendar, I will be letting you look at my beautiful chickens. Okay. Okay, today I will show you how to turn your Roman calendar into a Torah calendar. And why is this important? Well, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. We the people of Adonoya Ua are and have been living in the longest duration diaspora in the history of the world. None of us have been trained by Moses, nor have we been trained by the prophets. Unfortunately, most of our religious leaders have been both incompetent and insufficient. Unfortunately, the written Torah of Moses is not a complete document. Vital information is missing though exceptional clues are present in the written Torah of Moses. So we may assemble the pieces of the puzzle and we may have to add some conjecture, appropriate conjecture, that is. This is what we do know with respect to the calendar. Number one, a complete day contains both a dark period and a light period. That can be found in Genesis 1, 15. I'm sorry, Genesis 1, 5. Number two, a complete day both begins at sundown and ends at sundown. That can be found in Genesis 1, 5, Genesis 1, 8, Genesis 1, 13, Genesis 1, 19, Genesis 1, 23, and Genesis 1, 31. Number three, the first month of the calendar is named the Bib. That can be found in Exodus 12, 2, Exodus 13, 4, Exodus 23, 15, Exodus 34, 18, and Deuteronomy 16, 1. Number four, the first day of each month coincides with a particular moon face, which is called the new moon. We, the people of Adonoya Oar, are absolutely unaware of which particular moon face coincides with the term new moon. The Roman calendar also contains the term new moon. However, it is not logical to assume that the Roman new moon is equal to the Torah new moon. <laughs> Number six, the new moon may coincide with any of the following moon faces. The blank moon, the sliver moon, the quarter moon, the half moon, the three-quarter moon, or the full moon. Number seven. The description of the new moon is not included in any passage of the Tanakh. Note, some people use the term Old Testament instead of using the word Tanakh. The vast majority of religious people conjecture that the sliver moon face equals the scriptural new moon. The Messianic Jewish people, the Karaites, and the Rabbinic Jewish people hold such beliefs. They use the sliver moon face to determine and designate the month. Number nine, I conjecture that the full moon face equals the scriptural new moon as a result of Genesis 1, 14 through 19. Such is the only passage in the scripture that describes the moon. All other months, number 10, all other months have no name designation. Instead, all other months have a, no, a numeric designation. The second month, the third month, the fourth month, dot, 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 the 11th month, the 12th month. Such a standard existed until Solomon became corrupt. And he added new names to the month names. Those names, no one knows where those names originated from, except in the imagination and the mind of Solomon. 
as far as naming the months uh, by by their numeric value, that comes in Exodus 16.1, Exodus 19.1, Leviticus 16.29, and in several other places throughout the scriptures. Number 11. The Hebrew word month is Strong's number 2320, which is Chodesh. It has a Chet, a Dalid, and a Shin. The word moon is 3394 in the Hebrew concordance, and it's Yereach. It is a, um, a Yud, a Resh, and a Chet. Now, the new moon word that you see in the scriptures is just a repetition of the word month, 2320. So the new moon is not described anywhere in the Tanakh. Nothing says, oh, well, it's the full moon, so it's the, it's the new moon. Nothing says, oh, it's the sliver moon, so it's the new moon. Okay. Now, uh, the, the Sabbath is on the seventh day of the week. That is according to uh, Genesis 2, 1 through 3, Exodus 20, 8 through 11, and Leviticus 23, 3. Number 13. I conjecture in that, that in the days of Moses, each of the specific new... Of the spe- I'm sorry, let me start over again. I conjecture that in the days of Moses, each of the specific moon faces occurred on a seven-day interval. I conjecture that the visual observation of the blank moon signified the seventh day Shabbat. I conjecture that the quarter moon, you know, the observation of it, signified the seventh day Shabbat. I conjecture that the observation of the half moon signified the seventh day Shabbat. Same thing with the three quarter moon and same thing with the full moon. This is a foolproof method of knowing when the seventh day is and therefore keeping the seventh day Shabbat. Now, let me show you how I convert the Roman calendar. Obviously, March of 2023 is the calendar I'm looking at because it's done and it's done neatly. April was a mess up. Okay, as you can see, this, like on the 5th, that is a Roman date block. Number 6, Roman date. Number seven, Roman date. Number eight, etc., all the way across. And of course, the Roman days are called after false gods. The day of the sun, Sunday. The day of the moon. Obviously, the moon god, the sun god. And if you want to look up each name, there's Tuesday is the name of a false god. Wednesday is Woden. Thursday is Thor. I don't remember. I think Tuesday is T-I-U. The God's name is T-I-U something. Don't know what the value of that is. Friday is uh, Frigga. And Saturday is Saturn. So, Tor people do not use those words. Those are pagan words. Those are the names of pagan deities. We're commanded not to use those names. However, the Roman calendar has those. So, if you say that, if you want to be correct, you could say Tuesday according to Rome or Wednesday according to Rome. This way you're putting the heat on them and not on yourself. Okay, so anyway, each day, what I did is I split each day in half. I put a light part on one side of the day and a dark part on the other part of the day. Okay, same thing here. Light part, dark part. Light part, dark part. And I put each day, the light part... Like for the fifth day, the light part is the end of the fourth day. Then the fifth day starts at sundown. The, the line, the dotted line here, which separates the light from the dark, represents the sundown. Okay? So each day starts the sundown. The fifth day starts at the sundown on the fourth day. The f- end of the fourth day. So you got the end of the fourth day, then the fifth day. Then the end of the fifth day, then the sixth day. End of the sixth day, then the seventh day. The end of the seventh day is the light part, and then the eighth day. See? So each day starts with darkness. That's what the uh, diagonal lines represent the darkness. That's, say, let's just call that 7 p.m. as a round figure. 
because sometimes in the summer it's 8 p.m., sometimes it's 9 p.m. But let's just say it's 7 p.m. That represents 7 p.m. It gets dark from the light. The light turns into darkness at 7 p.m., which starts the new day. Then the next morning you wake up. Obviously, you go to bed. You wake up in the morning. It's the light part of the day. It's still the seventh day. Then at night at 7 p.m., again, I'm just using a round number because every, every day changes. Okay, so let's just call it 7 p.m. Starts the eighth day. At night, you go to sleep. You wake up in the morning. It's the light part of the day. You go through the whole day. That's still the eighth day. And then at sundown, you go to the ninth day. And then again, you sleep throughout the night. You wake up in the morning. And you spend the day doing your work. And then it's the end of the ninth day. And it's the start of the tenth day. Okay. Now, for the first month of the year, it's the month of a bib. You have to know when the moon face designates the first month of the year. Now, I cannot comment, because it's conjecture, whether it's the sliver moon or the full moon. That being said, whether it's the full moon or the sliver moon, what you do is when the barley is a bib, okay, you have to pay attention to sources in Israel. When the barley is a bib, the next moon face whether it's the sliver moon or the full moon, is the first day of the month. Now again, I, I will repeat this. It's conjecture that the sliver moon represents the first day of the month, and it's conjecture that the full moon represents the first day of the month. That being said, this is the procedure for finding the first day of the month. The barley's a bib. Okay? Now, I personally conjecture that the full moon is the first day of the month. So that means on the end of the fifth, which is the darkness part of the, the end of the light part of the fifth, the darkness of the sixth, that's when the new year begins. Okay? Now, there are the people, like I mentioned earlier, that follow the sliver moon. The sliver moon, the procedure is exactly the same. The barley is a bib. And the next sliver moon is the 21st. Right? So that is the end of the 21st, sundown, the beginning of the 22nd. That night would be, for those that follow the sliver moon, that night would be the first night of, or the first day of the year, okay? For the full moon people, the first day of the year occurred here on the 6th. The middle of the 5th, the end of the 5th, the beginning of the 6th. That's for the full moon people. Again, for the sliver moon people, they would start their counting of days here on the 20, at the end of the 21st, beginning of the 22nd. Okay, now, because I follow the full moon as the first day of the month, and again, that's conjecture, I call that a bib one, a bib two, a bib three, a bib four, all the way through to the end of the month. Now, the month of a bib is, has the month of Passover, has Passover in it. As you can see, I wrote on the calendar on the 14th day of bib 14, is when Passover begins. Passover begins at sundown. They go all, all, all night. You go to sleep. You wake up in the morning. And of course, that's when Egypt, Israel left Egypt. In the morning. Then unleavened bread. And you go for seven days of unleavened bread. Up to six, a bit of 16, a bit of 17, a bit of 18, etc., etc., etc. Now, if you use the sliver moon as the to signify the first day of the month, then you would start, this would be the first day of the month, right? Because here's the blank moon. The blank moon you can't see. You start the sliver moon here, you start your count. Ten days. Don't, in ten days you bring in the lamb. Of course, they would have it in, the, it, that would be in April, according to Rome. And then on, the, on their 14th day would be Passover and unleavened bread. 
okay? Which comes out to be. Uh, their Passover comes out to be sometime this week. I believe it is uh, 8th, April 7th, according to Rome. Okay, so now let me show you how I make the calendar. Very simple. Obviously, you see these dotted lines. I put a dotted line in the center of all Roman days. I've gotten to here so far. Then what you do on the first day, right here, I'll show you by, um, as you can see, I'm adding the darkness, right? That's what the diagonal lines represent, the darkness. The non-diagonal, the, the light space, the white space, represents the day part of the, the, the light part of the day. This represents the dark part of the day. Light part of the day, dark part of the day. Then how do you number them? Hold on, I'll, I'll, start, I'll show you. Okay, so you see I, I, I darkened in the right half of each Roman block. I kept the left half of each Roman block blank, as you can see. Now, you can be creative. You can use crayons and magic markers, or uh, perhaps you want to put some other, maybe you just want to put fill in the whole space with darkness. I don't know. It's up to you. As long as you can read these numbers, remember, the first day starts at the sundown, which again, approximately 7 p.m. By, by fifth month, May, of the, of the Roman year, uh, it's already starting to get stay light. It stays light until around 8 p.m. in South Carolina. So this represents 8 p.m. right here. This represents 8 p.m. This represents 8 p.m. By the next month, six month, it's about 9 p.m. It stays it stays light until about 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. Okay. Now, notice how I have the numbering here. You have the dark part of the day, which is the first day, and the light part of the first day. The dark part of the second day, the light part of the second day. The dark part of the third day, the light part of the third day. The dark part of the fourth day, the light part of the fourth day. The dark part of the fifth day, the light part of the fifth day. The dark part of the sixth day, the light part of the sixth day. Dark seven, light seven. Dark eight, light eight. Dark nine, light nine. Dark ten, light ten. All the way through. Make sure you keep track of where the full moon is on the calendar. Thankfully, that science already tells us when the full moon is. So we know that if we go outside to observe it, we will see that the full moon is first visible this coming in May. I'm talking about fifth month of the Roman year, right? May, according to Rome. That the full moon will become visible at the end of the third day at sundown, at the beginning of the fourth day at, at sun, sundown, the dark part of the day. So the full moon will be visible all this time period here. And in some places, the full moon is visible during the light part of the fourth day of fifth month, 2023, according May, according to Rome. When is the... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get down to that part of the calendar yet with the dark and the light, but it's the same thing. Here's the blank moon. The blank moon will have begun at the dark part of the 18th or at the end of the light part of the 17th. That line will be right there. And it will continue until the end of the light part of the 18th, which is the dark part of the 19th. Okay, using one that I have completed, you, you saw the full moon here, the half moon. They're calling it the last quarter moon. Anyway, that I call it the half moon. The half moon begins on the 11th at the when the darkness starts, which is the end of the 10th. See how the 10 is there? The end of the 10th at sundown is the same as the beginning of the 11th at sundown. That night, the half moon will be visible. In the morning when you wake up, in some places, the half moon is still visible. At sundown on the 11th, which is 
also the same as sundown at the beginning of the 12th, you have the half moon, etc., etc., etc. Okay? Again, this is a very easy way to visualize the Hebrew calendar or the Torah based calendar on top of the Roman calendar. Very easy to make. Remember, each day has two parts a light part and a dark part. So it starts because the scripture tell us it starts when it's dark, when it's sundown. So the day starts here. Day two starts here at the same time as day one ends. That's why I put the one. Remember, two dark, two light. Three dark, three light. Four dark, four light. Five dark, five light. Now you know. We have to piece these puzzle pieces together to come up with the truth. We can't go with exactly what the Karaites say, or the rabbinic Jewish people say, or the Messianic Jews say. We can't use that. That's their conjecture. It's not, you're welcome to use their conjecture, but they can't make it a law. They can't make it a regulation. Just like I cannot make the full moon a regulation. It's my conjecture. Now, I cannot say what their reason is for their conjecture. The Messianic Jews, maybe they just say, well, whatever the rabbinic Jews say. Maybe the Karaites say the same thing. I don't know. That's You'll have to ask one of them why they believe the sliver moon starts the month. I believe the full moon starts the month because of the description of the moon given in Genesis 1. Uh, verse 14 through 19. Okay. Thank you very much. If you like this content, please hit like. Maybe you'll hit subscribe. And maybe you'll share this with your friends. If you find my new format is better than my old format, where I just said things in an impromptu, off the top of my head manner, please let me know that you like it. Thank you very much.